Hey guys, it's fun to be here back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a barracks in Godot. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So the first thing you want to do is have your barracks prefab. Now it is set up so I have a static body with a collision shape. And it's using the same uh, mesh as the model. And then I have a mesh instance here which is pretty much just the visual for the barracks. And I have a position 3D which is useful. And it's called spawn position. And it is where units will spawn when they get finished constructing. And then I have a canvas layer with a control element. And it has a vertical box container with alignment set to center. And it has two buttons in it. A rifleman button and a machine gunner button. Both of these buttons have scripts and signals. And then I also have a timer called spawn timer. Now you want to go to your button script here. And you want to have a packed scene called unit to spawn and a resource called unit data and we want to create a signal called build press so whenever we press this button this is spawn with this is called and in our ready function we want to connect pressed to button pressed to so this function down here and then when we press the button we emit another signal called build pressed we emit the unit to spawn and the unit data and then we also do uh, two other things on mouse button entered. We go, we do global vars dot mouse hovering UI is equal to true, and on mouse button exited and global vars dot mouse hovering UI is equal to false. Now you do, I'm pretty sure you have to connect these signals through code, uh, but it shouldn't be too inconvenient to do. And essentially, what this does is prevent the UI from closing whenever there's a building behind the button. So if there's a building behind the button and we did not have this code, then we would have to continue clicking on the barracks every time we want to build a unit. So that pretty much just gets rid of that. And then the spawn timer just has a timeout signal on spawn timer timeout. And then the barracks is where all the magic happens. We have an array called Q and another array called Q data. And then we want to get every button in this toolbar and connect it to build press signal to self. And then I just have a function called add unit to Q. And then this add unit to Q takes into spawn and the unit data. And then I append it to the Q, the to spawn and the uh, Q data to just U data. So I append U data to the Q data array. And then I have set up a state machine. So if the current state is equal to states.defense. Then uh, we get if we're selected, and if we are not selected, then we want to hide the UI, and if we are selected, then we want to show the UI. If our queue size is greater than zero and we are not currently constructing, then we want to get if we have power, and if we do have power, then we want to start the spawn timer, and then we get the queue data, the first element in the queue data. And we get its cost and then we divide by 60. So currently I'm using the cost for time. Uh, I don't really think that's the best thing to do. I probably will have a spawn time variable in the future. So you could just replace that with time. And then uh, if we do not have power, then we just want to start the same timer. We do pretty much the same thing, except we multiply it by two. So it will take longer to train units. And then we say is constructing is equal to true. And then on our spawn timer timeout, we get if our array size is greater than zero. Then we want to instance the first unit in the queue. We get the navigation node. So in the RTS game, there is a mesh instance. There's actually a navigation node. It will be dis discontinued soon, so I will have to get rid of that soon. Uh, essentially, so... The scene holds a reference to that, and a global var script holds a reference to that. So we want to get that and then just add the child of unit, so that selected, so that instance unit. And then we want to set global transform.origin to the spawn position.globaltransform.origin, so it sets its position to the spawn position. We want to subtract the current money, so global vars.current money miles equals q data, the first unit in the queue, and then dot cost. We remove the first element in both queue, and then we say is constructing is equal to false. And then when we go into the game and we spawn in a barracks, we should be able to spawn riflemen in. Yes, and a rifleman does indeed spawn if we continue to instance it. And the money gets subtracted, and the buttons get grayed out if we 
do not have the money. I don't actually know where that is occurring at, so I'll probably make another video on that in the future. But if you found this video informative, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It helps out the channel, helps get content like this work and others. That's all from me for now. Fun Uber, out.